Welcome back everyone. If you're new here, my name is Brian Jenks, and today I'm going to tell you a little about a really cool application called Tela, Tela.tv. Tela.tv is a really interesting and pretty handy service. If you want to make high quality videos, even edit them, splice the pieces together, and create a very well-rounded piece of content with minimal effort, not needing any sort of complex video editing software, and just very, very simple ease of use, do check this out. I've been playing with it, and even this entire video is filmed and edited with Tele.tv, and thus far, it's been an incredibly easy experience. Uh, this is a little bright. Let me turn down the brightness there. Yeah, that's better. This is an incredibly handy service because you can record videos in the browser using a web extension or a browser extension, or even uh, if you have a MacBook or you know a I, iMac, Mac, Mac product, you can use a Mac app to do it on the desktop. Now, I will tell you that I don't really like the browser extension. We'll get into why, but the actual filming with the browser and the Mac app for the desktop are my two favorite ways of uh, filming content on this uh, service. And then after you film these clips, you can edit them, and then you can publish and share them, and even export and import them at 4K resolution. It's pretty incredible. Let's dive into the feature set. Now, I'm not sure how much this is going to lag, so forgive me if it does. It's just, To make a new video with Tela, it's as simple as on their website, because because I'm going to do the browser-based recording first, is just click new video. Now, this is where it kind of lags a bit, so I'll go back out. So on that view, you get several options. You can uh, create clips, you can edit clips, you can even uh, add zoom features. And if you have multiple things going on, such as uh, sharing both like your personal camera, as well as a browser tab that you're displaying, you can even change and modify how these two different screens are presented in post. So instead of what I've been doing personally, where I use OBS and I overlay different layers, I can't change those in post. At least if I can, it's beyond me. With this, even after I've recorded, I can edit and change these layouts at will. Split a clip, change half of the clip to a different layout at will. All right, so I actually have to switch back to uh, OBS for this particular one, just so I can actually show you what it looks like to record a new video. If I'm going to record a new video, I you know, click new video. Let me stop the camera because I don't want it to actually be doing that. Otherwise, it's very laggy. So you can select your inputs like you do on any other type of recording software, Zoom, whatever. Uh, and you can select you know, audio, camera inputs. You can share screens. So you can do like an entire selected area, your entire screen, or selected tabs in the browser. There are some additional options like presenting slides or speaker notes. And this is really handy because if you do different types of recordings, you get different results. If I do a quick recording, then what this does is that as soon as I finish this single take, this single shot, it immediately takes me to the edit screen as if I just did a single take video. I can do a one, one take demo and then immediately get it done, do a little bit of editing and share it and I'm completed. I'm done with the entire process. Now, if you're shooting a more complex video, you got a script to follow, you need to do some more editing, like you're probably not gonna be doing that. So what you'll likely be doing is multi which you know, pops up and tells you a little something, record multiple clips in a row. And so what this lets you do is that I can record several clips one after another, and then I can stop, rename those clips, edit those clips, and deal with them. And that's how I can begin to form the structure of my video. And this is basically like a timeline. Now, if you're dealing with lots of in-depth editing, this might not be the perfect tool for you, but if you are for several things, if one, you are trying to get a really good looking output with a very small amount of effort and you just need to get a little bit of editing, a little bit of polish and just get something out there, great product for you. If you're neurodivergent, then all the, the executive function tasks and having to deal with editing and all the little stuff and all the steps, this simplifies a great deal of these things. So it might be easier to just get something productively done using Tela rather than like an in-depth editing software. So I can record a clip and it's probably only gonna be audio because again, camera lag. So I can uh, start recording. I can click to make it just immediately skip through the countdown. Otherwise it'll give you a countdown so that you can actually time it better to help reduce how much of the trimming you need to do. But here's a 10 second clip of audio. Well, let's actually do one with camera just so it's actually not 
you can actually see some of the features. Forgive the lag while it does this. Okay, so record some camera. It's going to give me a countdown so I can be better. And here's my camera clip done, lagging super heavily, whatever, and stop. So I've just recorded two clips, one back to back. And so now I get them in order on this timeline. Let's turn this camera off, it's annoying. So now I have these two clips, what can I do? So what I can do for each of them is I can click on to uh, individually, click on them and edit them in this, you know, this little timeline here because I have multiple clips in, in a row. So if I'm finished editing, I can then click add clip and add another one to this process. So in here, this is when we get into all of these different editing options, which become more apparent when you get onto a clip that actually has video content. So we can trim these videos to actually like, you know, which you would normally do, trim the audio and the video of it so we can split off some of the ends. And once you select your, um, your clip that you wanna trim, like for instance, if I wanna trim the, the ending of this, I can move the playback cursor there, split the clip, select the half I wanna delete, click delete, and click done. And I've just trimmed the video. And then you can do that on both sides to trim the video. But you got that little handy timer, so that can actually help you reduce how much of the trimming you need to do by adequately timing the beginning of your clips. Once we do that, let's say we didn't even like that recording, you can click re-record, which I'm not gonna do, and actually replace this clip in the timeline. That's really handy, because then you can almost record and edit in place, which for other softwares, uh, if it's a feature, it's something that I haven't really seen it be very apparent or highly uh, you know, suggested it's used, but that's really handy. Now with backgrounds, you can actually select some pre-built ones, wallpapers, textures, pick a solid color, a gradient, or you can upload your own sort of backgrounds. And I believe you can even get rid of that. Uh, not quite sure, but hey, the backgrounds, again, this might not be for like mega professional videos, but it's almost like, if you remember this tool, Loom. And we'll get into more about how it's different from Loom later on. So layout. Here's one thing that's really cool is that you can actually change the layout of particular clips. So for instance, this is just a you know headshot camera view. If I wanna change it, I wanna you know, have the background, I can keep it. Or I can just focus it entirely on the camera view. I can make it a little bit more mobile friendly or change the general shape and how this applies. Now you'll see how this actually ties in when we actually film with a presented screen, like a, a browser tab. Because this little bubble head sort of image is what we normally do when we're like right now, like the clip I'm showing you right now, I am a little bubble head in this circle here in the corner. And this is what we would do to actually show that when we're recording with additional tabs and screens. So then after we got layout, there's border, which is what you assume the actual border for the clip. So if I go back to a normal layout here, the border is literally the edges. So like right now I can make them rounded or sharp or even you know the drop shadow whatever you might want. Um, and so then we can go to mirror cam, which is actually what I did already because this is how I actually appear more to myself if I was in a mirror. So you can change this in post or you can record it that way. So either way, that's nice. And then size. Size is also really, really awesome because if we're gonna be doing some sort of presentation, you can actually change this size to fit mobile media. So this you might just take and straight up upload to YouTube Shorts, Instagram Reels, TikTok, whatever you wanna do, it's now mobile friendly. And remember, I can do this in post, so I can record into a normal landscape video view, and then I can change it into mobile friendly view. Granted, the clip I have here is probably not the most ideal thing, but we could actually film content specifically meant for mobile platforms export it when we're done and then load it up that way instead of having to shoot straight from the hip on those recording platforms. This is incredibly handy for making your mobile content for fellow content creators. All right, now shooting with the browser extension. Now it's funny because it's inverted. That's just because of my dark mode hack thing. So ignore that. But using the browser extension to film rather than being on the tele.tv site, I personally do not like this. And this is because the interface and how this works, I just, it just does not jive with me. I can record a clip here using the extension and it's starting, blah, 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 okie dokie. And now it's recording. It's probably gonna lag a little bit and we're gonna finish. So I don't really like how this pops up and I don't like dealing with, with this particular 
facet of things because then it would then open the interface and it's on a whole separate video, which is not what I wanted. I would want that to be on the same like sort of video timeline, the one I'm actually working on right now. So this does not function that way, but it's okay. I don't like the browser extension, but the actual website version, this version, and the desktop are, in my opinion, the best to record with. We'll get into that next. Okay, the Tele Desktop app for Mac. I really like this because it really makes doing desktop filming and then editing in post a lot easier. So all you need to do for this app is obviously download it. You connect which items you want. So I have like my audio, my video, and then you can actually do your selected screens. You can select Windows, an entire screen display, which I'm not gonna do because I have an ultra wide, so it looks really bad, and then selected area. So I normally do selected area, and then it actually picks half my screen. The screen that you are actually looking at right now, because it's the same thing I do in OBS. I select half my screen, which is the normal screen width, and now I can record using the desktop app. So if I do that, and it does its little countdown, which you can probably see right there in the corner, and now we're recording. I am recording this half of the screen just like you're seeing. And I also have the video mirrored on this particular one. So then when I'm done, I can stop it and it saves, and then we can preview it, which then opens up the additional project. Now this is the same sort of you know issue where it's not the, the same project that I was ha already had open in the web version, but you know, okay, I'll let it, I'll let it slide for now because maybe I can just upload more clips, which I can do at will. So with the desktop version and actually recording in desktop and uploading it, the really handy thing is that we now have the ability to zoom and also crop screen. So if I was actually to uh, play this clip at some point, and now we're recording. So get it somewhere in the middle. Recording this. Have okay, so now it paused. But what we can do now is like, hey, I don't like how big I am and how small the screen is. Well, hey, we're in post. I can actually go to layout and I can determine how big or how small I want to be. I can do this or, and here's where it comes in handy, is that now I can do bubblehead. All of that editing is now done in post. That's fantastic. So now I can do a uh, zoom, which, uh, let me double check here. Did that go to the same video? No, okay. So now uh, as it's playing, and now I can actually do zooms. And what this will let me do is that as I'm showing things on my screen, which in this case, I probably should have selected, some, selected something different than the actual tele-interface, it got confusing for a second, is that now on the browser tab that I'm sharing, I can click to add a zoom and I can select where I want to actually zoom with this little interface over here. So I can go all the way over there at this point for this um, particular selection, because again, I can select different parts of this and choose where I want to actually have a zoom. So then if I go all the way over here, you can see that it actually zooms into the corner for that clip. So for the desktop view, that's really handy. But my favorite thing about the desktop view is that you can actually change the layouts in post. I can choose where I want the bubble head to be. I can change the size. And again, this means that I can also change it to be mobile friendly. This might not be the best looking clip, but you know, if it gets the job done, that might work. And so for the, the mobile view for layout, we can again, change the layout view for mobile. Let's say I want to do this one. I could do that. Um, I could do this. I can change whatever I want the layout to be. So this can be really handy again for your mobile views and editing. And honestly, this is kind of funny that I have to do this in OBS just to film me using Tele simply because I'm recording the use of Tele behind the scenes. So because I shot these clips with OBS to actually show the Tele um, application and everything working, what do I do with those clips? They're outside of Tele, right? So now we have other options for actually uploading clips. If I did select, I can actually duplicate existing clips and then, you know, maybe splice them, change them, and change the layout, which is what I was talking about earlier. But another, additionally, what I can do is go to Upload, I can add more files, and I can actually choose to upload additional clips, like I'm doing right now, which is the actual clips of this video that I'm making as I'm making them. 
So in this way, you can shoot in other ways, upload the clips, and then do all of your editing in Tele, and then export the actual end product video in that 4K format. And it gets even cooler with what else comes out with those exports. Okay, I've uploaded all the clips prior and I'm ready to do something with this video. What can you do? Let's just say I've even finished editing this. I have all my clips, I'm ready to go. I can click finish and it is as simple as that. Now this video is at a link. I can publish this, I can share it and I can do whatever I want with this video. So I can grab a share link, we can send it to you know, individual locations, Twitter, embed it, email it, copy the link, whatever, and treat this kind of like Loom. So what else we can do with this is that I can also download this video. And this might be what you might wanna do if you're gonna share this to say YouTube or grab your videos that you've prepared for TikTok, Instagram Reels, YouTube Shorts, whatever you wanna do. I can go back in and edit these clips on this video at any time. And as soon as I click finish, it becomes a finished shareable product. Anytime I can go back and edit at will. That's really nice. So again, sharing gives us multiple options of where to send it, but we can also download this. And here's where it gets really cool, is that you can download in 4K resolution. We can even get an external subtitles file or embed the subtitles in the video itself, which is really handy for YouTube and YouTubers because then subtitles, bam, already done. Or what is also really handy is export the separate clips so you could film in Tele, export the individual clips that you've maybe even done some Tele editing to already. And then you could take those clips and drop them into your own video editing software if you need to do even more extensive editing. Or in my case, what I might do is then take those clips and actually apply my uh, chapter marker feature. So what I usually do is in Final Cut Pro where I edit on Mac is that I have all of my clips in the timeline and then there's a feature where you can add like a marker to, to specific places on your timeline and you can even add captions to those markers. And I've talked about this in a video way back on my channel and it still stands true to this day. This is how I do it, is I just add captions to those markers and then I export the Final Cut Pro XML file, and then I have a Python script that just runs and scrapes the XML and literally gives me a list of chapter markers with timestamps for the video. And that's how I do all of my timestamps in my YouTube videos with very minimal effort because ain't nobody got effort for that. So this feature that it's kind of like making your data inside of your applications exportable, accessible, democratizing the data because it still lets you export all of the individual clips that then you can do what you want with it. So you could prioritize filming in Tele or editing in Tele or both. Either way, it's a feature rich enough service that makes and simplifies a lot of the content creation process without making it too simple to get something pretty and good looking done, but not complex enough that you just become paralyzed by indecision and analysis paralysis. It just makes it super accessible and easy to make something that looks good. So you might be asking, how is this different from something like Loom? So we have the ability to publish these videos. There's ability to have add comments. Uh, we can add a button or something. Like th this looks very similar to what you might see in Loom. And where it differs is Loom is great for efficient, just get it done. Here's a video and it's up there and it's accessible. Tele is great about creating a very polished version of something pretty similar. So the same, but more. And if you want to apply this tool to your tool set, it could be a great asset for content creators, especially with just so easy to make mobile friendly content. I think it's a great addition to your tool set. And if you're interested in using it, I have good news. You can get 30% off by using the link and the coupon code either in the bottom of this video right here or in the description or pinned comment. Brian J30 will get you 30% off of the application. Enjoy. And with that, I will catch you all in the next one.